how do you react when people challenge your ideas? So when people debate your ideas, when people when there's conflict happening, how do you react? When we're when we're discussing conflict and we're discussing challenges, there's there's two pieces to it that I want us to start off with. Because there's two parts of us that need to need to change, need to reframe in order to be able to actually deal with this properly. And the first part I say is our mindset. Okay, so whenever we're we're looking at changing something within us, we're always gonna look at these two parts. We're gonna look at mindset and then we're gonna look at our habits, so our actions, right? So what things we actually do. There's always two things. So we're gonna start off with a mindset. Mindset is about a perspective. What perspective do you have on conflict? So how do you perceive when someone challenges you? That's the first step of this. Because how you perceive someone challenging you really shifts the rest. Whether you see it as a negative thing, whether you see it as a positive thing, whether you see it as just someone trying to get in your way. And so that's the first part that we wanna do. So we wanna change our, our mindset and change our perspective to start looking at conflict as an extremely positive thing. Conflict is something that is productive. So we wanna look at productive conflict. Because here's the thing, if someone is actually willing to argue with you and challenge you, what that immediately tells you is that they actually care about your opinion. Because when you don't care about the other person's opinion, you're not gonna spend time trying to convince them otherwise. They care about your opinion. So if you proceed to give an idea and someone engages in challenging that idea, that's an extremely positive thing. And the reason for is that they wanna put your idea under pressure. They wanna put your idea under enough scrutiny so that it can get better. See, conflict is the journey to truth. It's our ability to go from where we start to where we wanna be by putting our ideas under pressure. We need to start thinking of it in a very positive way. In a lot of workplaces, in a lot of schools, we have conflict. And they either happen you know, where we allow it to happen in, together, where we're actually willing to engage in it, or it ends up happening through gossip or office politics. And what we want to avoid completely is where conflict and challenging ideas ends up as gossip or as, as office politics. And we want it to be something that happens together collectively. And so we look at we look at conflict as an extremely positive thing. We want it to be we want it to be something that people engage. But if you're looking at this and you're like, well, well every time someone challenges me, I feel like it's rude, it's personal, and they're attacking me. It doesn't seem productive at all. It's more personal. If what we're seeing the conflict being personal. What, we, what that tells us is that there's an absence of trust. What that tells us is that you're engaging in conflict with people where you don't have deep trust with them. And what you need to actually work on right now is not finding a way how to deal with people and how they challenge your idea, but how to establish real trust and real empathy with those people who are challenging you. Who, because when, when, our, when, our, when people we care about, people we trust challenge us, we're more willing to listen to them and more willing to actually work with them. And so that's, the, that's our first goal, okay? So our first goal is change our perspective on how we see someone challenging us and our conflict. Let's move on to the, to the second goal. So okay, how do you actually deal with it? What, what, what do we do? So the first step in this, as I always say, listen empathetically. Listen empathetically. Sometimes you, you're so excited about your idea and you love your idea. We fall in love with our own ideas, right? And you, let's say you're proposing a project for a new event that you wanna do in your organization to bring people together. And you propose this, propose a project, and then someone challenges it. Our immediate response when someone challenges it is we wanna respond right back. We wanna argue right back. But if you're arguing right back, what that tells me is that you haven't actually heard the other person. What I always say is that you, it's, like, it's like eating food. You, you can't just swallow the food. You have to chew it first. When someone gives you an idea back and challenges you, make sure you chew on their words. Consider their words and actually think about what they're saying to you before you respond right back and just attack them right back because you think their challenge is nonsense. If we can empathetically listen, what that'll do is it'll immediately get them to buy in. Because they'll say, oh, interesting, at least that person is listening to me. They're willing to engage. Because your ultimate goal with your idea is the benefit of the idea, not the way you get there. So that's number two. We wanna distinguish what we call between features of the idea versus benefits. And what I mean by this is, let's say you had an event idea to bring people together, okay? So your event is to have a soccer club at work or a foosball tournament at work, whatever it is. Your idea is the foosball tournament. If someone challenges the foosball tournament, they're challenging the feature, which is the tournament. But the benefit of the foosball tournament is to get people together, is to have fun, is to create culture. 
So as long as you're not challenging the benefit and you guys agree on the benefit, then you can say, okay, well, maybe if it's not a foosball or a ping pong tournament, maybe we do a team retreat. Maybe we do a team outing. And there's another way that we can kind of do it. So really look at is when you're listening, are we, are we debating over how we're doing something or why we're doing something? And this is the how and this is the why. And if you can get them to agree to the why, then you'll have so much more uh, room to actually grow and play with. The last part that I wanted to talk about in terms of being able to work with people who are challenging your ideas is you want to create familiarity. And familiarity, familial, familiar, familiar, I can't spell familiar, I can't even say it now, it's going to be one of those. We want to get people to be familiar with our idea. And what I mean by this is that the more familiar someone is with your idea, the more likely they are to accept it. And this is a funny little notion. It was if you ask people, would they, if you showed people two pictures, a picture of themselves in, of how they look in the mirror or a picture of themselves of how they look actually in real life, everyone prefers the one in the mirror because it's the one they see more often. It's the one they're more familiar with. And that's why true, when we have true cameras that flip the picture, we don't like how we look because we're like, yeah, that's not how I look because it flips it but you're used to seeing the mirror image of yourself because people are used to what they're familiar with. So what you have to do is you have to talk about your idea a little more often. Sprinkle it. I always say it's a little drip campaign, right? Talk about your idea the first time, then mention it again the next time, then the next week, and get them to be more familiar with the idea. Talk about it over time and really give them an opportunity to, to mull it over. And when we're making something familiar, we want to connect it. We want to connect it to something they already know. The, the example here is um, shared by Adam Grant in his book, The Originals. He talks about Disney and The Lion King, which was an awesome movie, one of my favorite movies. But when The Lion King was first pitched to the producers at Disney, people didn't like how dark the movie actually was. The killing of the father and, the, and, 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 and Simba leaving. And it just felt like this really dark movie for kids. But when the directors who were pitching it created a familiar connection when they said, well, it's actually similar to Shakespeare's King Lear and Hamlet, the producers loved it. And they said, oh, that makes so much sense. I see the connection. I see how you're using this animation and this story of animals to, show it, to tell a Shakespearean story. And Lion King went on to be one of the greatest movies that Disney ever produced because they connected it to something they really enjoyed. So this is how we can actually get people to engage with ideas. If they're challenging our ideas, and if they're, they're, if we're not sure about how we feel about it, we gotta, we gotta make sure we at first address our mindset. First address our mindset, make sure we're feeling productive, or we're creating productive conflict. When we feel positive about conflict, when someone challenges us, we appreciate their willingness to engage in the idea with us, and we actually don't make it personal, but create trust by allowing them the room to actually uh, debate us. Then we look into actually things that we can do. One, we listen empathetically. We chew on the words that they actually give us. We make sure we find an agreement on the why we're doing this, why the idea. And it's okay if they're debating us on how we go about it. And then the last part is that we create connection and we create make our idea familiar with them by mentioning it over and over again. And that's the best way in how to deal with a challenge at work when there's conflict happening.